So yeah, welcome to uh, Inside Fanatics Brush Summer Split Edition. We've got the pre-show happening today. Um, a bit earlier in the week than we usually do. Uh, got some personal things coming on on Thursday and on Wednesday. That's for Yixi's um, Japanese um, um, class. So yeah. Um, so yeah. Welcome on Twitch this time. I'm super happy to be able to have the internet connection to do it here. I've prepared plenty of content for today because we've had a banger of an off season. Um, in, on, in the LEC in general, uh, we've had a lot of changes, um, a lot of uh, interesting uh, elements as well uh, happening for different teams, which I'll be going over. And um, obviously Fnatic, some quite uh, unexpected ones uh, to some extent. We've had the EMA now. I'll be mentioning um, some of the things that have been said yesterday. And uh, yeah, we'll be going over obviously expectations for not only week one, but I, I guess overall for the split. Um, what do you guys think is going to happen for this season? Um, so yeah, thank you for joining me. Um, we're we're gonna keep the same kind of system, so obviously I'm gonna bring you guys on board. Um, I'm just gonna check if I am I am on a community podcast uh, VC. So um, if you by any chance are not part of the Fnatic Discord, but you still want to chat with me, uh, I'll ask you to to drop on there. Um, there's a um, there's a voice channel called Community Podcast. You can come on there. I'll uh, unmute you so you can chat with me and um, yeah we can discuss what's what's been going on so um, yeah I don't know what else to add really I'm super excited about all of this um, and the fact so I'm using Streamlabs and I'm it's, it's like I have this whole system that I can control so I'm, I'm like a kid right now I'm super happy that this is finally happening so yeah I guess we'll just jump and in, into the thick of it um, I guess we'll we'll actually start with the the LEC uh, the off season changes. So I hope this works properly. Okay, are we good? Yes, okay, yeah, I forgot. We're learning, we're learning, guys. This is first time on Twitch. 2021, hey, we're doing Twitch right now. Welcome to the world, Matt Scott. Um, yeah, okay, cool. Uh, so yeah, uh, I was saying, I'm, I'm a bit like a, a weatherman. Now. It's like, as you can see, we've had the changes here, but um, some pretty crazy changes uh, over the off season. We thought it would be a, a kind of, I don't know, sort of tame uh, off season, maybe a few changes here and there. But in the end, uh, we've had quite a bit, I've made a list of it. I'm just gonna push you guys on the side like this. Um, so the first one uh, was actually, we, ha we had the rumor of Niski would go to 100 Thieves. Happens that Abedage actually bit the bullet in the end. So he's like, of all, players i was not expecting abadage to move to um to any in the in the, in the first sense uh, then we've had nuke duck coming back out of nowhere joining excel replacing chocolate uh i don't know about that it's kind of it's kind of interesting to say the least um and what else what else would i have on the list uh, there's Misfits, uh, who brought in Denik, and I think that's it. No, sorry. Denik from Misfits to Excel. So Tori is out, and I believe he's on Mad Lions Academy roster. Gilius is out, so that's two changes for Schalke. They've got Kure, who was on Gamers Origin, I believe, who's 
played pretty well, uh, but I don't know. For me, I always felt like Gilius was kind of the uh, the the vector on which the the team would play around and who would be able to bring out the potential out of some players like. I always associate Faker Dage with the moment when Gilius actually joined uh, the team at that moment and he was able to bring them to kind of that, that next level. Um, Vitality with three big changes, to be honest, in their top jungle and mid. They brought um, SLT from uh, Big, uh, Self Made, so they took Self Made from us and they brought in Litter from Mercy Sports, so that's that is pretty big and I think that's going to make Vitality one of uh, probably if, if this works well I think they're one of like the top contenders for the title I'd say to, to some extent I don't know like it's I think at one point you have to value um, you know like synergy and how people who like playing together are gonna perform you know when they're actually enjoying the people who they're playing with um so that this this could be like quite insane, and uh, obviously a lot of people have been talking about uh, Litter uh, um, deserving a spot in the LEC for quite some time, and now it's his time to shine. So we'll see what happens here. And then there's um, SK, which I think have made the two most surprising changes of all the off season, which is. Treat, who was an amazing support, uh, easily top three, top four uh, to some extent, um, who for me was really the crux of SK doing much better than their previous seasons, getting to move to the jungle and sharing the fact that he's not really looking forward to it, but he's kind of doing what he's told. And then you have Jazz's who's leaving their head coach role, who's coming back to support as he was on, on Fnatic. And it's like, it feels kind of boom. It feels kind of mental boom, to be honest, because I don't know, it's... I, I don't understand why um, Tinks was... Well, f oh, sorry, I should say, I don't know, I don't understand why it feels like Tinks should be moved out of the roster to the point where they're doing those crazy like it's not even like they're replacing it with another jungle from ERL or from their um, uh, from their academy team because they, they have good academy players as well um, wait no SK I, I'm, I'm confusing with uh, Schalke who's on SK I can't remember but there's 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 a lot of good potential on, on ERL and instead they're going with this convoluted kind of system of like um, we're we're gonna have um, our coach coming back to support when he's not played uh, the pro scene for for a couple of years and we're gonna have treats kind of force him to move into um, the, the jungle role so uh, I think like SK have completely gambled their season where they, they could have started with a, a strong like spring split uh, with with the rookies that they brought in and the sort of move forward that they, they had and instead it's like taking two step back and uh, I mean obviously all organizations are going to tell you oh we we've, we've reflected upon this we know exactly what we want to do but to me, it kind of looks like super coin flip, and there's no there's no logic to this move. So, may maybe we'll be pleasantly surprised, but for me, I I, I don't see it. I don't see it. And the last what, what was it? I last oh yeah. Um, obviously this is just temporary, but the um, blue from SK has apparently had health issues. Thankfully, not related to to COVID, and he's supposed to get back on his feet pretty soon. But he will be replaced by I don't know how to pronounce this. Two horrors. Basically, they're academy uh, mid laners. So, yeah, it's gonna be a interesting first week to to be sure. But uh, we'll see how this works out because. I'm not. I'm not too sure how SK is gonna manage their season. So um, I don't know. Good luck. Uh, good luck to 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 them.
but um yeah um there's there's quite a discrepancy on on the on the roster moves here you between uh you know you have excel excel like bringing in denik like denik was actually kind of really decent uh last time we we saw him play um nuke duck is just why like, do you really value Nuke Duck over Chekolat? I mean, obviously they must have had some triads. They, they must have had some elements where they they feel like it's the right decision. But I don't know. I mean, how how many seasons have we heard? It's the year of the duck. It's the year of the duck. It's the year of the duck. And we've yet to see something really. So I've I've uh, I've no idea what what expectations Excel have, but. I don't see them really going first getting to playoffs, but leaving that bottom two uh, place. So I don't know. Again, we might be surprised. Maybe J Nuke Duck needed a break. Um, maybe with Denik, it brings in something that Tori couldn't bring to the team. Um, I'm not sold. I'm really not sold. And on the other hand, you have Vitality who. Already back at the beginning of the 2021 uh, season was rumored of wanting to make some big moves. You know, there's there was the talk about bringing like Perks and Alfari and making this sort of super, super team, you know. And while they didn't manage to do that, I think what they have right now is a really solid roster. Um, how well they're going to perform is hard to tell, but there's very good talents like SLT, it's like one of the upcoming uh, top laners. Self-made is self-made. He's when he's been with us, he's been amazing. You know, whatever happened in this year's spring split happened, but you can't deny that he's the one that's carried us on our best of fives against G2 in summer when we faced it in, in semis. Uh, he had an amazing performance at Worlds, so. You know, he's he's definitely gonna want to prove something. I think going into Vitality that he is still one of the top junglers in Europe, and I guess having leader, which I believe is someone he wanted to have part of Fnatic when we were looking for a different mid laner, um, might boost him in his uh, performance afterwards. So um, they've kept their bot lane, Crunchyro Labrov, Labrov. Again, very very solid uh, support. So it's going to be interesting to see the the jungle support sort of synergy how they work together. And then Crown Shot, I feel, might be a bit more comfortable with first of all rejoining with Self Made, with which he was in Mad Lions um, back in Spain. You know when they were with um, uh, Nemesis, and uh, what it was, it's that. No, it feels more like these guys all know each other. They're they're buddies, and they they have this kind of um, profile of like the L nine profile, which is gonna define maybe their their play style. So that'll definitely be interesting to see how how that happens. But um, yeah, I don't know what you guys think about these roster moves. Um, if I don't know if some. Uh, I'm having to switch between um, Discord and my uh, my Streamlabs, but uh, even if you want to type in in um, in Twitch chat, I should be able to to see. I don't know if it's updating live. This is this is this is completely first time, but um, I don't know. Are you guys typing in Discord? You guys are typing in Discord. God damn it, guys. Give me the interaction on Twitch. <laughs> There's a new platform, dude. What's happening? Um, oh, we have Boomer. Boomer, Boomer you have you want to you wanna jump in? You want to share some opinions? Oh, he's, he's, uh, he's, uh, he's deafened himself. Sure. Okay, let me... Uh, let me unmute you. Actually, I might need to, before you say anything, uh, I might have to add uh, audio output capture. What is it? Um, give me 
two seconds. I'm just gonna switch scenes very quickly. Uh, what is it? Desktop audio. I have desktop. I have desktop audio by default. Um, Boomer, give me your voice. Hello. Yes, perfect. Good. Welcome back to the new season of the Fanatic Podcast. Uh, how's it going? You look. It's great. How are you? I'm 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 super excited to be honest. It's been very nice today, as you can. And I, I think it's one of the first podcasts I'm doing with natural light, um, because I have such good internet. The camera quality looks really good. I don't know what how you guys are, are seeing it on on your side. Let me know in the in the chat if it feels really good or if it's kind of choppy whatsoever. But I'm happy with the experience so far. So boomer. What's uh, what's your opinions on what's going on in this off season? Let's not talk about Fnatic yet. Let's just LEC in general. Uh, LEC in general, it's kind of weird, though. Honestly, I have mixed feelings and some changes. Vitality seems like they made some interesting pickups, mm -hmm. and I hope it will work out for them in the end. But honestly, I'll be honest with you. I didn't follow that much what was happening in LEC. But I followed the LCS quite a lot, and that was very bizarre, so to speak. Yeah, for sure. It's um, I mean, I mean, again, I think for me, the the, the biggest surprise was Abidagi leaving, to be honest, because yeah. I um, that's that's the thing I didn't expect. For, for me, like Abidagi was an essential part of Schalke. And I actually didn't mention who re his replacement is, which is the Nuclear Int, who's supposed to be really good as well. So that I mean, it's exciting to see the new guys, but um, you know, it's it feels like Abidage could have been like a, one of the great sort of up and coming mid laners, and he's already made the choice of of going to NA. And I've there's also been a lot of how do you call it discussions about players making the choice to go to NA. Like we even had upset. You know, obviously, I guess thinking about what was happening um, following the, the Fnatic playoffs and seeing every time it makes sense going to NA to like, if, if, you, if you don't win LEC, you might as well get the bag and go to NA. So, I mean, I don't know what Abidage's objectives are and I don't want to put like words in his mouth whatsoever, but it's it's surprising for... for um, player his age who's you know while he's not maybe the top two top three mid laners he's still a very good mid laner and he's able to, to pop off so um it's it'll be interesting to to see how he plays i think 100 fees what they they won two out of their three games i don't know has anyone watched lcs have you watched lcs i haven't really because it's late at night so i kind of watched some bots but yeah, yeah the, the timing in NA is kind of weird yeah they, they've but... won two out of their three games so i guess he's he's not too bad i'm, I'm, I'm gonna look at I'm gonna go purely out of kda which is a disgusting way to analyze but oh he's been on karma duty Okay, so he went 0-1 and 15 on their game against Cloud. So they beat Cloud9 and Cloud9. Holy shit. I'm actually not going to speak about the LCS moves because Alfari benched, Sven benched. Like you think yep. uh, you think LEC is bad? Well, they're they're benching their most expensive players. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. It was my sort of a consolation prize. I look at the LEC what's happening and then Across the pond, there is an A, and you see all the stuff going on, and you'll be like, hmm, maybe it's not so bad after mm -hmm. all. For sure, and it's so weird. Like, I mean, and the 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 the, the worst part is that. So I've I've uh, I've actually shared an article on the community podcast channel, and they're like, we don't think Sven's gonna come back into the main team. You're like, what? It's like literally like you have perks that you bring in this year and to bring in the synergy of like the old G2 of like Sven and Mithy in the coaching position. Uh, now, especially that Mithy has replaced the Reaper, uh, not Reaper, um, help me, um, someone in the chat, uh, Fnatic Jungler oh, for won. 2015 who's who was coaching Cloud9. 
Rain over. Rain over. Thank yeah. you. No one's helping me in the chat. You guys are not But watching. you remember that yourself. <laughs> yes, because I'm a genius. That's why. No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, but no, but, you know, and, and then you have Alfari, who you freshly brought to NA this year, who's cost a bazillion uh, dollars, and it's like, up, oh, he's benched, and... Clearly, Alfari is not happy about it because he, he, he memed what uh, Jack said on Travis Gafford's um, show. And so there's some drama. But uh, in any case, let's just go back to LEC for a moment. Mm -hmm. And uh, you, you were saying about Vitality, Smith, right? Yeah, I, I was talking about the Vitality. I think uh, this change in, the, in these two acquisitions are good for them in the long run. Mm -hmm. I think Vitality will be stronger than last split, but then again, uh, other teams also made changes. So, yeah, but look at the other changes. It's like, it's like bringing it to the bottom in my because if if I so I'm just gonna go back to so the 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 teams who have made like big a lot of changes were Excel. For me, they're not upgrades. Like I don't think Nuke Duck is that necessarily much of an upgrade compared to Chekalad. Um I'd say Denik is an upgrade to Tori, but how much of an upgrade is it? I don't know. And then um, the the SK moves, like, what the hell? Yep. And uh, about the new duck thing, it's every year, which is the year of the duck, and it basically never happens, so... I think people are, are just memeing too much, and currently in regards to changes, especially since uh, some new rookies are coming onto stage, mm -hmm. I think it, it would be best to wait and see how they actually perform in big leagues, because everything which happened in other leagues, like EU Masters and so on and so forth, it's, it cannot be compared. For, for for example, we, we all saw how teams from so-called wild-colored regions performed mm -hmm. at MSI against some stronger teams it's like it's like people were playing completely different games in my opinion yeah for sure and you know just to go quickly back onto msi it was uh, you know it's, it's something where um you know obviously talking about lec and and, and mad lions where we we didn't know what to expect and um you know you have el yoya who's fresh rookie and just it's just been on an upwards trajectory of even showing up at msi and you know going toe to toe against guys like like canyon and way so it's it's i mean it's exciting to see rookies but i'm how would i put this i'm kind of on on the edge of like bringing rookies in the middle of a season if that makes sense where what is it exactly that you're expecting? As it's not something like you're going to develop them throughout the, the split, right? It's like, well, you're going in into a summer split, who's you know, the, the most important split because it's pretty much what's going to qualify you to the world tournament, which is every team's objective, obviously. And I think there's a double pressure because the first pressure is like, well, you've been brought in by a team from ERL region, uh, uh, from, sorry, not ERL region, but ERL leagues, onto um, what do you call it, onto the LEC, and what is it that is going to be expected from you? It's going to be not only to perform to the level where you are at ERL, where you're admittedly one of the top players in your role, but on top of that, to be able to bring the team that's just hired you to a playoff position and then as far as playoff to be able to to get um the first second or third spot into into worlds so unless you know some organizations are kind of honest with them and they're like no oh, well we're, we're bringing them in but it's more of like a long-term development thing then fine but i doubt that you get a lot of organizations who are going to come forward and say oh we're not we're not aiming for worlds this year like what? What message do you send to your fan base? Like every fan wants to ha wants to support the team that's going to to worlds and gonna say, oh, that's the team I'm supporting, and they're going to worlds because they brought in that that rookie or something, and be super proud about it. So, yeah, it's it's gonna be interesting. 
for sure. But um, I think from all the moves, I think Vitality made the smartest ones, for sure. Yep, and uh, I also agree with your sentiment that it's kind of not the correct time to make any any major changes. And I have my own two theories why this happening. First of all, COVID. People went insane and are doing just random stuff for the sake of doing it. Yeah. And 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 second one, I noticed this maybe at the at the end of last split that some organizations started doing changes for the sake of change. Mm -hmm. Like stuff didn't work out, and it was instantly like, yeah, let's swap this, 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 guys, and then see what happens. I don't think it's the best approach, and I think uh, Yamato summed it up very well yesterday. If you if you don't try to win, then what the hell are you doing here, basically? No, for sure. So, for sure. So and and I think most of those moves, except for maybe Vitality, aren't productive to actually winning stuff. Mm -hmm. It's it's more like we didn't win before. Let's see what happens with, with this roster. And that's it. It it doesn't have proper intent behind it, in my opinion. No, that's. That's uh, that's that's actually a super valid point. Is that how I, I mean? I don't always want to give them the benefit of the doubt to say that well, there's there's actually some intent to it. Like they want to do, um, like they they have some objective and they're not just bringing in those people just for the sake of it and say, well, you know, we're we, we've we just brought in because they look good, but we don't want to go to playoffs whatsoever. But from from the exterior it's actually hard to say oh yeah i completely get what they're coming from or what they're looking to do so yeah yeah i i'm completely on board with what they're saying like vitality there i'm like holy shit they're actually kind of scary you know um because not only they're they're bringing up like up and coming players but these players know each other they're friends in real life already so it's like you know, it's it's like when you're 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 playing football in in the streets, and you're like, oh, I'm gonna make a team with all of my friends. We might not be the best footballers, but when we play together, we we trust each other, and we know exactly how we want to play. So it's like puzzle pieces coming together, and, and and that's it. So I don't know. We'll we'll see how how that mashes out. But for for the rest, that's that's not the impression that I get. I mean, maybe maybe Schalke, you know, in a sense where it's like, well, you've lost. Abidage, so who are you going to put in at the back? Nuclear Int. Okay, Nuclear Int actually looks good. Uh, so is it because you remove Abidage and then, then you remove Gilius and then you think like Kira is going to be a good uh, like complementary player with um, Nuclear Int? So that might be also like the, the mindset that they have. So, you know, Schalke's moves, interesting. Let's see if that, you know, brings them a bit higher in the, in the rankings or if it just if it's just the status quo and for vit vitality it's i think i think they're definitely gonna go a bit further but it's like what are your expectations with a team with that much um, potential basically it's like do you just want to get top five and and um and secure playoffs or, or do you want to be like a top three top two contender and i think vitality is an org and with their um uh, I was, their their ambition and what they've looked to try doing, which is bringing Alfari, bringing perks, according to rumors, um, they definitely going in that direction to say, well, if we don't have maybe the brand or the um, the arguments to bring in those those players for sure, uh, then let's see what we can do with you know maybe top middle players and then build on that and if we can do really well then we've got our money's worth so in that sense for me it's like vitality has done like some like it's, it's such a change right it's from going to shigenda militza and um who was it in the jungle on, skins uh, on vitality yeah the skins is that who it was? Well, Anyone I in the chat? I honestly don't remember. Let me check it out quickly. Uh, Vitality Jungler. It was Skins. Yeah. 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 
so so yeah so he's um honestly most bizarre change for me this split maybe besides all the all the nonsense in, in an a is schalke because i don't i think there were rumors that they were planning to sell their spot no yeah so, so well that would be at the end of the season so they're gonna play the split forward um i think i mean like they, apparently they're they they're a l- millions in debt so i don't think they were expecting that selling abedage was going to patch it up but that could have been like so um, basically they are cutting the costs uh, yeah it's like we, we're trying to do something here and afterwards it was more like with um with the the, the gilius move which is like is it because you've changed your mid laner, then you don't need someone like Gilius and you can maybe look for for an upgrade or, or, or something? So I'm, but I'm he, not too sure. But is Gilius just on the bench or is he a free agent now? Um I think he's free agent. I think he's free agent because I mean but, usually but bench he's... means free agency to be honest um yeah that would be most likely the case see, see but roster. i didn't hear any rumors about gilius joining any other team no, no, no. i mean it's a bit hard for him to join a team now because he's kind of like um what's his name dardock with less maybe teams that he's joined but it's like he changes constantly uh let me see if i can find it here where is he? Gilius, Gilius, Gilius. Uh, huh. Oh, there you go. No, I guess he's on the bench then, because he's still shown as part of. Uh, yeah, he's like a sub, basically. Yeah, I mean. And, yeah. And they've gotten Kira in his place, no? Yeah, it's Kira. Kira is, uh, has replaced him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Who was a uh, part of uh, gamers? I mean, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, Kire has played in LEC slash EU LCS before. Yeah, he was in Misfits when it was already oh. the LEC. Kire. Oh. Yeah, that might be the case. Yeah, 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 he was. Since, and, since uh, he missed this, so and it wasn't before. that great. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because uh, I think in the fall 2019 or 2018, Misfits was like this country team. Yeah. yeah. In like uh, with more changing chances to flip incorrectly yeah. than in a good way. But now he's performed, be- like he's had a resurgence in ERL. So we'll see because. In my opinion, some players are much better in ERL because maybe it's more to their level, and I think their level gets their their actual level gets maybe inflated um, because of that. But um, uh, it, it'll be it'll be interesting to see how how that works out. But um, yeah, I think I think kind of that's the the overall kind of opinion on the on the changes so far i don't know if there's anything else you wanted to to add from that i just uh, wanted to add a few words about vitality sure we you you were mentioning that they all are friends and so on and so mm-hmm, forth mm-hmm. i agree with that sentiment completely i think people tend to underestimate how much teamwork and relationships are worth in the team-based game yeah So I expect Vitality to maybe reach top five. Yeah. Split. Maybe even higher. We, we, we shall see how, how well they perform. Yeah, for sure. I, I definitely think they have the roster for it. Um, for me, I think it would be a bit better if they went further than uh, reaching just top five. I think they should try to push for top four, maybe. I don't know. It's hard, like... You, you have what you've top three will probably be like mad lions rogue again and then it's going to be between us and, and g2 because i feel like we have something a bit better this time or maybe not i don't know it's going to, I'm, but i'd like to think that would be the case and then probably vitality needs to 
either contest for that first spot or go for a solid like four spot contender so yeah but it's it's some i can't remember the last time uh and middle of the season um um roster changes has been that spicy to be honest um usually we get like small changes like one player gets changed but there there's been a lot of really good changes and exciting ones and on the other hand or the other side of the spectrum it's like we have stuff where it's a head scratcher basically you're like yeah what happened but uh yeah in any case uh boomer thank you for being the first participant of this uh yeah. twitch twitch season twitch era of the of the show and uh, i'll be more than happy to to have you back on on future episodes for sure sure happy to be here and it's always good podcast thank you thank you i'm just gonna move you here and move you back there i mean actually no you don't necessarily have to stay in the community podcast channel because i'm here i'm on twitch so you can see me here um the the community podcast channel really serves as um, a platform for me to have you on board and, and talk so don't completely uh dismiss the um, what do you call it the 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 fanatic discord it's still there for you to talk but we have um, we have Twitch. Um, with that said, let's talk about what we. Oh no, it's me. Sorry. Yeah. Um, so where I live, um, it's kind of on the um, sort of outskirts of Paris. So there's a lot of traffic. Um, last night I had a lot of um, hard time to fall asleep because there were actually roadworks and decided to hit the drills at one in the morning so even with the this uh, thick window that you see here um i could still hear them so yeah fun times um in any case let's talk about fnatic and oh my god fnatic has made some moves so I'm going to change scenes. There's prob my microphone's go probably going to be off. So I'm going to have to uh, do the audio capture again. Are we good? We are good. Cool. Um, so yeah, the two big changes in, in, in our team. Um, I guess the first one we brought in Frenchman Adam from K Corp, which really has the most Cinderella story of any ERL team I've ever heard. Like this, um, this organization comes into the LFL this year, not necessarily with the biggest budget to to spend. Um, originally um, created by popular French streamer and they they bring in players like well adam obviously um uh, x maddie who used to be part of fnatic rising very very good adc who's been amazing for our team um targamas who's also been part of fnatic rising before and crushed the lfl uh amazing huge fan base who seriously took over uh twitter and the the casters and everything and went into EUM and it's like we're the team to be and they go into the finals epic best of five they win it all and we're like hmm this Adam guy is actually not too bad let's uh, let's give him a shot then and at this point people are like oh okay so maybe it's um it, it, we're gonna have him as this famous like six player as as Buipo has mentioned many many times, like uh, he would like to have a sub who would contest for his um, his spot, and that would maybe push him to be more competitive, to work harder, or to exchange idea with this top laner, very much so as he did with Soas back in 2018. And then what do we learn? Oh, Buipo's moving to the jungle. And I'm like, what the hell? Like these 
uh, journalist leakers whatsoever, Wulu and, and the whole squad, they hit the 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 smokes, dude. Like they they've been they've been too much on that on that good stuff. And it happens that well, actually, Selfmade is leaving, and he could be joining Vitality. And I'm like, what the hell is going on in Fnatic? There's some drama and some bullshit. Then when everything is confirmed, Selfmade is like, yeah, Whipple was forced. Like it felt like gun to the head. If you don't take Jungle, we're we're gonna kill your girlfriend. You have to make a decision. Where I'm like, as much as you can criticize the, the Fnatic organization I doubt that they leave this kind of moves to their players you know so obviously we've heard the EMA yesterday and I've asked you guys question about what you felt about it you were quite happy with the responses between you know um, the AMA um, what Dardo said once when the, um, the self-made messages leaked um, it's you always want to be cautious, obviously, because we, we've had a lot of bad surprise. But at the same time, you kind of... Well, in, in my opinion, I kind of like the fact that they're clearly owning up to their mistakes. They've defined them and they're, they're uh, aware of them and they're, they're putting them forward in a sense that they know they fucked up. They know the season sucks. And we've heard a lot of exciting things like the... Um, the, the the performance center and wanting to hire people who are gonna um, measure like what what the, the the impact of of nutrition and exercising and sleeping has on performance. So we're we're going to that next level. Um, I obviously expectations that I think fans should have right now is not to say oh we're gonna win it all. You know Adam. He, he he is the key to Fnatic, you know, already flipping it around. Um, you know, it's like the the second coming of so as an, another French top laner. There we go. That's that's what we needed, you know. Vive la France baguette and all that shit. It's like no. There's like a long term vision here, which I appreciate is that we're bringing in bit by bit the pieces, which I really hope are gonna make. Fnatic great again, you know, to 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 bring in a popular phrase, but in a sense to say that we're gonna make sure that the um, the next players that we're bringing in and the one that we've recently removed are making it that the whole environment issues that we've had before are no longer happening, and I think that's happened with first of all like reckless, uh, I think self-made you know there's something i didn't really like is that a a lot of fanatic fans like turning on self-made as soon as he as he left the organization it's like uh he's he's always been shit we've never liked him it's like no you have to recognize what he's brought to the organization like he's the one who finally made us uh, enabled us to beat g2 in a best of five when we were getting spanked for years we were absolutely ridiculed by this team and there was like he brought back some hope and he was amazing at world to the point where we almost beat um fpx it's you have to be honest with all those elements and say self-made maybe didn't work out maybe he was not the right person that we needed there's um what do you call it there's an interview with with niski that was uh i think it was in french so I don't know how many of you would would actually be able to see it, but if you guys want to check the the Fnatic Reddit, and I'm going on it right now, there's someone who did like a, a little uh, TLDR of the of the situation. Um, let me see if I can find it. So basically, where he he spoke about Adam, um, saying that Bwipo and him they they talk a lot about the matchups and when they disagree it's like they go 1v1 which I think that's super exciting to be honest and they test it out um, they help him with his macro obviously um, but apparently he's like popping off in scrim so it's exciting but obviously his stage is, is very different but he's already doing well in that sense and we've heard from him from Adam himself that he's very happy with how the way uh, scrims are going so that's very good um the f- uh, he's mentioned 
so Niski's mentioned also Bwipo that he's never understood why he was a top laner and that the way he plays and sees the game he always felt like he was more of a jungler and he's mentioned that self made's more of like a resource centric person like he feels like he needs to carry the game and Bwipo is more like he he plays for his lanes you know so uh, the fact that he's playing more around mid has helped Niski quite a bit um and also Niski about himself that he's changing a little bit his rapport with the team and his role in a sense where before he was listening a bit too much and now he's trying to have a more proactive approach to to the whole situation so like seeing all these things really when so uh, there, there was like two stages for me there was the first stage where i was like hmm like I, I, it's cool that we're having adam and it's something that i had mentioned uh at the beginning of the season when we're like you know boy post probably his last year within fanatic where are we going to find a top laner it's like we're going to find one in erl there's great talent there and people are like oh but no there's no always good top laners like just just in in one split we have adam is popping off out of nowhere so that's that's sorted right but i'm not necessarily a fan of bringing in uh, a rookie in the middle of a split like i, I can understand that you want to catch him now because it's like this this rough diamond you know uh, that you that you want to polish properly and maybe like oh it's uh it's, it's it's a new caps you know it's like there's there's so much potential between him for for uh, on him like he's 19 and he's already popping off but he has a lot of things to work on but once he's managed these things then maybe next so as who knows like uh th but there's a lot of space for growth for him that's that's where i'm coming from um and then obviously moving Bwipo to the jungle it's like i mean sure maybe he has this natural uh, talent for him to to transition easily but he still has to face at the end of the day people like uh, yoya inspired even yankos and self-made and so it's like Sure, I mean, maybe maybe he has good understanding, but then when it comes to facing those people, are they is he going to be able to out-jungle them? Is he going to be able to outsmart them? So I was really undecided on those moves. And then hearing the AMA, um, hearing the, the, the player testimonies as well on how they're playing together and how they're, they're feeling this new synergy, how apparently screams are going well and, and how it feels like they're more on the same uh, wavelength now um has actually made me very excited for this project while i don't necessarily have a lot of expectations for um the summer split and uh, again i don't think fanatic fans should expect that we lift the trophy at the end i think if we make it to finals we'll have more than reached our, our, our objectives and i think anything above that so basically winning the split is overachieving so um you know, I, I think that's that's already that's we have to be honest with ourselves, right? Those are massive changes. You're you're role swapping someone, even if uh, he's, he's a natural born jungler. Still, you're bringing in a rookie who's yet to test himself against the big top laners, and a lot of people have emitted that about from him, especially like former coaches or big voices from the scene, and it's like, hmm, you know. Uh, this guy is playing well but apparently they don't think he's good enough so we still have to test him uh on there so the, you know it's it's like i, I want to kind of send a message to the to the fanatic fans and say it's fine if we're not the best team like you can't expect to be the best team with the changes that we've made you 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 need to keep your expectations high obviously for the 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 long-term project which has been sort of showcased to us and 2022 might be the spicy year for for fanatic maybe the resurgence but right now it's building blocks and i'm hope i mean obviously that we're gonna if, if if shit goes down people are gonna flame and say oh adam is shit and then there's gonna be the the f uh, french french twitter who are going to attack the the flaming fanatic fans you know it's going to be a civil war completely within the fan base but uh in any case it's you you have to make sure that um you you, you stay reasonable with the, the, you know what's going to happen as long as we see improvement i think we should be very happy 
we can expect to within the, the first half of the split like we, we have a really tough first week right i believe we're going against mad lions uh rogue and misfits and even misfits even if they i mean i don't think they made any changes but usually when we play against misfit misfits uh we we go 50 50 against them especially on the first week like they they managed to beat us and we go against a very strong mad lions and then we go against rogue who's top two from from spring so you know what uh what's uh what's it gonna be you know what 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 expectations can can we really have in the end so um yeah um that's that's pretty much all i have to say um anyone want to jump in on to uh onto the community podcast vc if they want to share opinions um feel free to do so let me know you can tag me in the community podcast channel if you want to if you want to chat but otherwise i'll just be moving uh forward uh, with the with the predictions so let me know if you want to chat say something it's your time to shine I'm missing your chat. How am I missing your chat? Is where I'm going to refresh chat. Uh, I'm not seeing your chats either on your voice. Do you want to come? Do you want to jump in? You can. You can come into uh, the community podcast VC if you want. You see. There you go. Okay. I'm just going to make sure I have desktop audio enabled and there we go one two three yixi the platform is yours i'm here i'm here welcome to the twitch uh arc of the of the fanatic podcast how's it going thank you thank you good busy with my classes mm -hmm. absolutely busy with my classes. so where are you in the first place <laughs> let's you not even talk that. about it i've been missing too many classes it's uh yes you did yes you bad. are yes yeah, you are yeah. but we are not talking about that <laughs> because because this is the podcast not Absolutely. the japanese class <laughs> so as you were talking about the changes in fanatic and the fan base and uh, their um kelp um, and uh, everything i mean if we want to have a i've been saying this like as an old fanatic fan and everything i've been saying this like for years if you want to have a successful player not just esports you need to take care of his physical mental health and of course his game without those two you can't have a focused esports player who's going to give their best if we talk about physical health they sit a lot they need to exercise, they need to stretch like any other sportsman, especially because they sit a lot. Of course, they need to exercise, they need to have their mental health good, team synergy, everything needs to be worked on. So I'm eager to see how, the, how these changes are going to work in all aspects, not just the game, but in all aspects. So I'm looking forward to those changes as well that uh to those things as for the changes itself themselves oh boy i mean Bipo in the jungle self-made is gone adam is coming you said you said it yourself if something happens we are going to have like the french fan base go at because let's fa let's face it if some if a favorite is attacked then let's face it there are fan wars not just in esports but let's say k-pop let's say celebrity fans and so on so it's not just esports because let's face it even gamers are in a way celebrities equals faker so yeah i'm looking forward to all the changes especially that bipo is now role swapping so he's now going into jungle 
And I'm eager to see how he does because everyone's been saying, oh, now he's a good jungler and so on and so on. I think even Selfmade said it, that Pepo is going good in, in the jungle and that he was like, why didn't he do so earlier? If I remember correctly, was it, was it that Scotty? Was it something like that? Uh, absolutely. Um, I, I, actually, a lot of people, um, even before the move, were already. So within Fnatic, uh, previous coaches, um, most noticeably uh, Young Buck, had spoken with uh, Fnatic staff and said, Yo, Buepo is actually a, a potentially very good jungler because he he has very good understanding of the game. Uh, I'm not sure if it's something that Mithy maybe mentioned as well. Um, Buepo has also offered himself and he spoke about it on the off season for uh, this year that um, uh, he he would you know self made could basically fuck off and he would play in the jungle instead you know so that's kind of what's <laughs> happening in the end and um, and uh, you know it's uh, obviously as you mentioned it's like is is he going to be a natural you know and uh, is it just some solo queue stuff or does can he translate that on a, on a professional stage obviously so exactly. i think that's going to be the big expectation um i know he's mentioned on the ama yesterday that there are still some elements that they're working on but they are, they are very minimal uh, compared to like what the overall role of a jungler really um entails in in its full like definition so um i think there will definitely be some um some growing pains at first but not as much maybe as people might think of him moving to the jungle but i i think i guess it's not totally strange to have him move into the jungle that's that's as much as i'll say but yeah. i don't well, know we'll have to see fa let's face it yeah we're we're going to see how it goes but when you do a drastic change like that even uh, no matter what you do Whenever you make a drastic change like that and switch your, um, well, he was always a top laner. Mm -hmm. So he is switching something he's used to into a role that everyone is like praising him that he should have done. Yeah. Okay. Let's see how he, do how he does that because there, there is a grain of truth in everything when you, when you hear the praises, oh, he should have done that earlier. He should have done that earlier there has to be something in it mm -hmm. so they wouldn't praise him to so much and like say that he should have done it unless there is a grain of truth in there yeah for sure so so i am eager to see um to see how bipo is in the jungle so i would i would say like welcome to the jungle yeah for sure <laughs> for sure and um uh, um, one thing maybe I would add was that uh, I think Boipo wants to be as flexible as possible um, in regards of the picks he's able to, to pull out. I just see someone saying, talking about uh, playing Rengar, obviously, um, and that the team is kind of pushing him to um, reduce the size of his uh champo mm -hmm. so they can focus on like strats with specific champions and he's a bit frustrated but he understands but i think him keeping like a wide champion pool is definitely going to help him on the long run when um um when we move into the playoffs obviously and we have um what do you call it we have best of fives uh, going in and he can pull out a spicy pick or if I don't know we we play against one of the top teams and he has to play a, a surprise pick uh, you know who knows uh, so it's um, it's exciting to be honest to see how well he plays in that sense and we'll mm -hmm. see we'll try to see the results but um, yeah it's I mean, just just to go back to what you said at the start, it's like there's all these elements that are being added to the um, Fnatic organization that they mentioned that it's going to be more of like a long-term process, which uh -huh. is definitely something 
that we needed and i hope it really brings in the the valuable changes and that helps us take us back to the top uh, because i miss lifting um well i mean we never technically lifted an lec trophy but um i'd like to see a fnatic win um i i hunger for for trophies and uh, you and me both you yeah. and me both <laughs> I didn't. I didn't see uh, the if we are talking about the uh, like Forsaken season one. Mm -hmm. I mean, I would love to see that repeat itself. I swear, I would love that to happen again. Maybe in a few lift, years. <laughs> that lift that, yeah, that we lift that trophy again. But also, like you said about uh, Ripple in the jungle. I mean, he's a he's an analyst and has a wide experience like you said already mm. he has like a good understanding in the game of the game and i mean he showed he has shown that a lot of times so i think he's going to he's going to do good because he is so like analytical and knows the knows even the little bits so i think he will do good precisely that he has because he has like a wide selection of champions and that that is why it's also like a, a sort of a minus because when you have like that wide selection to choose from it's so hard to narrow it down like because you have the wide selection what goes good in the jungle hmm. that you already know possibly what can be adapted, what can be fixed, and so on and so on. But I think he will do good. I think he will do good. Yeah, I, I don't think it's going to be a complete flop where it's like, what the hell, we're, we're completely inting it by making this this roster move. Uh, I just think it's going to be... Like, I don't expect him to be like a top jungler at the start. He might be middle yeah. of the pack, and then progressively as they play more games, he will improve. What there's just one thing I don't want to see is basically what happened in um, in spring where it's like we had a bad start then it was like oh my god we're super aggressive we're like LPL mm -hmm. level we're just smashing everyone and then we're back down like no more roller coaster performances it's like I just want a climbing uh, you know exponential uh, progress and then once we reach playoffs or the last weeks into playoffs we're not shitting ourselves saying oh my god are we even yeah. gonna qualify <laughs> oh shit we have to rely on this team and this team and if they lose and then they win and then we win but they lose this game then maybe we can sort of snatch the fifth or sixth place and it's like no i want us to be comfortable coming at the end of the the, the season top four teams so we're in the upper bracket <laughs> and that we're not sweating that the first best of five we lose we're dumped yeah. out because right now we're uh, the fifth team in spring. So that also means championship points are very low. So if we're mm. looking to go into Worlds, which at this stage, I wouldn't be mad if we didn't go to Worlds, to be honest. But if that's still our expectations and our objectives, then we're going to need to do much better than top five. We're going to need to reach top three probably top two i'm not sure i mean it's going to depend on who qualifies afterwards and the number of points but we're going to need to go really far so yeah i hope we're climbing and we get to to that level and uh, I, f I hope that kind of i just seen a question like how do i expect Fnatic to perform like i don't know if that's necessarily what my expectations is it's more like i'm hoping that this is the trajectory we're taking and we're not just copy pasting what happened in spring pretty much so i hope I, I just hope as well for adam that he climbs in performance because this i like this kid i i've seen him yeah. talk he's super funny he's very yeah. french in his way of being you can yeah. you can trust me on that one and it's it's cool to to see that he's definitely super hungry he's mentioned like some top laners he he wishes to to go against and and, and yeah, experience. He, wa he wants to face Odo Amne. yeah yeah which is is yeah. like super fair because Odo Amne is, is the top guy you know um i i've seen some people saying that wunder is not that good but i'm sure wunder is going to come in into the new season and he's going to clap some cheeks so 
there's some big top laners to to be facing. Like even Armut. Like Armut's been incredible. So I think yeah. there's like these top three guys that are gonna look to be facing. And uh, yeah, um, I'm I'm definitely going in with in, with excitement into the summer split, but um, I'm not going in with Nestle like too many like insane expectations of like we're gonna be top yeah. one. I'm I'm just I I'm just hoping your... for progress. I share your enthusiasm and I share your opinion there. Cool. Awesome. So yeah, I I agree. I'm not I'm not so we need to have the slow but steady progress. No mm -hmm. repeating no repeating the extreme ups, downs, ups, downs. No repeating the extremes in the spring, please. So I share your uh, your opinion and I share your hope. I'm enthusiastic to see how these drastic changes are going to show mm -hmm. how Adam is going to prove himself because I have watched um, the French League yeah. somewhat. And he. I share your opinion that he is funny, that he is like, yeah, I, th I think he will do well, but let's wait and see how, because he's facing, like you said, Armot, Odo Amne, wonder when he doesn't play world of warcraft <laughs> <laughs> and so on so exactly. i'm i'm waiting to see how how adam fits into into fanatic awesome. he said he's he said he's excited so let's put that excitement and that enthusiasm into practice absolutely on board with that statement well thank you very much for for sharing those opinions, super valuable as usual. Uh, I don't know if you have any last words on on the the Fnatic roster moves. Well, let's wait. Let's wait and see how they do. I mean, drastic changes, drastic measures. Hopefully, good results. Yeah. And like Tofu Tofu said, I'm reading the Twitch chat. We have to be in the top three at least, and I hope we go this far. Yeah. I'm thinking. I'm thinking. Go. I'm thinking. We will. If everything goes according to how they imagined it, I think I think it is doable. Let's hope it is. Absolutely, and that gives me a great transition. So thank you very much, Yixi, uh, for participating. I'm just going to transfer you to viewing party here, and actually, you don't have to stay there anymore. So you can you can actually leave there. Um, but thank you for coming on on again this first. I, I, I want to emphasize this that this is the first Twitch episode. This is a new era, guys. Uh, we are we're we're modernizing the um, the podcast here. We, we're we're getting to the next steps. But uh, yes, let's uh, move on to predictions for the for the first week. Um, so I'm probably going to lose my audio again. And we back. Will it be a regular thing? Yes, we are on Twitch now. As long as I have a decent internet connection, so that would be me being in, in Paris. There's no problem at all that we are uh, we're we're gonna be there and uh, we're we're gonna have some fun. And uh, who knows what we do with this? But uh, j just to give you some some insight, it's to uh, uh, basically reach out a bigger audience um, because. Not necessarily everyone is on Fnatic Discord or wants to be on the Fnatic Discord for whatever reason. Uh, but I want to be able to bring this podcast to more people and maybe be able to invite them and share their opinion. Um, I know there are like other Fnatic fan servers out there. And um, and yeah, and, and hopefully we can, we can make something bigger out of it Br bring more people from the community i really want to make this about you know the fans and give you guys somewhere where you can talk and where it's not just like a line of text on discord and we we all fight because it's hard to really communicate properly when you're writing but actually come here and if you're happy about a result then you come talk to it if you're frustrated by a result come talk to it if you're questioning some moves from the the, the, the players or the organization 
come talk about it. So really, this is your platform. That's why I've been continuously trying to improve it. I'm having a lot of fun with, with Streamlabs. And uh, yeah, nice Photoshop. Thank you very much. I spent quite a bit of time last night on it. Um, so I, I appreciate the positive feedback, uh, Anna. I really, really do. Uh, but yeah, so predictions for the first week. We start with the banger. We have Mad Lions versus G2. Uh, I think Mad Lions is coming in with the high of MSI. They're looking really good. El Yoya is the best jungler in Europe. He's going to smash everyone. Even if G2 has a new like performance coach, um, I don't think there'll be enough. Mad Lions is going to come in and elbow drop them from the start. SK versus Astralis can go either way, to be honest, because SK... Uh, won't have their mid laner and they have their wid moves. Astralis still has the same team, so it's still a meme team in the end. But um, um, how do you call it? It's I don't know. I'm, I still think SK is going to take. I feel it's going to be like a 40 minute game, Klein Fiesta, but we'll see. Rogue versus Excel. I mean, Rogue obviously. Excel has no chance. Uh, Vitality Shalk. Uh, I think Vitality is going to come in super strong, but it's, I think it's going to be a good game. Um, if, for me, like that's the I say it's actually the most interesting game because like Magi two, two big teams, whatever. Vitality Schalke is like Vitality with their new roster, Schalke with their interesting changes. It's it's exciting, you know. It's like uh, kind of underdogs now. Um, so I'm ex I'm excited to see like these two teams with major changes uh, go at each other. Then Misfits versus Fnatic. Please just give us a win <laughs> for the first day against Misfits. It's like it's such a meme at this stage that we don't get to win against Misfits. Uh, so um, yeah, that's for um, uh, that's for the day one. Uh, day two. Look at that transition. It's so smooth, man. I'm I'm like a kid in the toy store. Uh, Excel versus Astralis. I think Astralis is gonna win. Uh, I think the Excel moves are kind of meme. But uh, I don't know. Maybe Danik is just gonna one v nine. SK versus Misfits. I think S Misfits is looking better than SK right now. Uh, Row versus Vitality. Pretty straightforward. Um, even though I think Vitality might bring a bit of a challenge, but I think Rogue's more solid. G2 against Schalke. And I'm sorry, I know I'm usually the hopeful one, but I think Mad Lion's going to look really strong in the first week, so I don't expect us to, to win. If we do, then <laughs> we're the best team in, in Europe. I don't care. No, I'm kidding. But um, I, don't, I don't think we'll be at that stage yet of being able to contest against uh, the top teams. And for the day three, because uh, we're starting with a super week, um, Sharka versus Excel, Sharka, uh, Vitality versus Misfits. I think Vitality is looking really strong. Uh, Mad Lions, Astralis, G2. And again, I'm sorry, guys. You're gonna say, "Yo, what happened to Matt Scott? This guy used to favor us like in every game." Changes have been made. There's there's a period of adaptation. I think if we do more than one, two, uh, this super week, will 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 be a super it will be a great performance. But like it's a complicated one, right? We we're facing Mad Rogues or the top two teams from previous split, who have not made changes to their roster, so the synergy and the way they want to play is still there. And then we're facing Misfits, where it's like it's always super dodgy when we face them on the first week, so. I think we can be happy with a, a one two week. If we get two one, if we go three zero, then pfft, let's let's truck on forward, dude. Let's do it. We're we're gonna win everything. But uh, you know, it's um it's gonna be a period of adaptation for sure. But um what are you guys saying? Let's be hopeful, even C nine started off one I mean C nine has been Sven. Like what? I like I know, like some casters have said, oh, you know, um, teams who are coming back from from MSI usually have a bit of a a difficult period of adapting or, or stuff like this. But uh, uh, I think Mad Lions gonna come in and not have that problem. <laughs> to be honest, they're just too good. They're just too good. But uh, and I mean, again, there's you can talk about meta, new champions, the introduction of Diego and um, Gwen. Um, shit, shit's gonna be different. So, 
yeah, but still exciting. I think some exciting first games uh, on, on this uh, first week. So um, I don't know if you guys agree necessarily with my picks. Maybe not with the with the Fnatic ones, or maybe you do. But in any case, those are my picks for the week, and this is the end of the pre-show episode first time on twitch um guys thank you so much for being part of this you don't even know how happy i am to to be doing this and uh able to take a next step um a few things i started a twitter account for the um, for this show it's at ifb podcast so if you want to go follow it i'll probably follow you back uh on which i'll be posting the the shows the vods when they, they get uploaded talking about some fanatic news maybe lec news uh so i'm gonna become a bit of a social manager <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I'm going to try to keep it active and make it as a platform, make it famous, get the word outside that there is a podcast about Fnatic and Fnatic fans. This is your promised land. You can come and talk to me. We can have a chat. We can have a good time together and you can come and uh, be uh, be open to any opinions you may have uh, as long as it's done obviously with uh, with respect um and in you know good arguments and which we can we can debate around but uh yeah that's um that's it i think for the first episode uh thank you very much guys uh i'll be seeing you i'll be seeing you first day next week i should be fine i'm gonna make sure i i, I don't do anything uh so yeah we'll be having the show uh the day before uh lc so guys thank you so much for coming here twitch mascot always fanatic see ya